This is what caused a critical 9.1 severity vulnerability in Next.js. How did it cause this? Are you impacted by it? What should you do to fix it? To find out all this and more, stick around for this vuln breakdown. So as you saw at the top of this video, I showed this code. This is the code within Next.js that has created the vulnerability that allows people to bypass middleware checks in Next.js applications. So what is middleware? Why would you use middleware in Next.js? Well, let's look at the documentation for that. Middleware, and this is documentation from Next.js. Middleware allows you to run code and functionality to handle incoming requests and manipulate them or make checks based on the request that's coming in before the actual request gets fully handled and responded back to. Okay, that's the gist of it. And some of the common use cases they list out here in the documentation is maybe you want to redirect after reading parts of an incoming request. Maybe you want to rewrite to different pages because you're doing A-B testing or experiments in your application, or you want to modify some of the headers for all the pages or a subset of pages in your application. But beyond that, middleware has been used in things like Express, Restify way back in the day, and even Golang. And it's not a uncommon concept it has actually been around for quite some time and it's often used for other purposes too things like authentication and or authorization you can use it for logging or timing to to debug and and figure out issues going on with the requests and the timing of your requests that are coming in and the responses that are going out that type of thing just to name a few other use case examples that can be done with middleware now, some will argue and have debates about whether you should be using Next.js middleware for authentication and authorization purposes. And while that is a good discussion to have and whether that's a best practice or not, the reality is developers can and will use that capability that's built into Next.js in that manner. On top of that, the documentation on Next.js also covers that topic on how you can use it in that way. Let me show you. So here we are, we're in the authentication part of the documentation up on Next.js. And within it, as there's plenty to read here and a lot of things that you can do to implement authentication and authorization in Next.js, one of the things that is called out is optimistic checks with middleware. Now, note, it is optional, but the fact that it's optional means somebody is likely going to use it. Maybe it's not used across the board, but developers can and will use this. Now, the idea with this is that you're going to use the session information that's part of the request to perform what they call optimistic checks. And the reasons they call out to potentially use this is so that you can redirect users based on their permissions or their authenticated state. So maybe you require that the user has to at least be authenticated already in your application before it can access an API, or maybe it needs to have certain permissions in order to do that. So you can use optimistic checks with middleware to do things like that. However, they note here as well, this is going to be run on every route, including prefetched routes. So it's important to only read the session from the cookie optimistic checks and avoid database checks to prevent performance issues. So the idea behind that is if you have functionality in your application that's sensitive, where you need to make an important decision based on a user's permissions, you're going to need to do that in a more secure way than via Next.js middleware. But regardless of all that, developers are going to see this code and they're going to see that they can implement middleware that will look at the session cookie and use that to determine the permissions or whether it's an authenticated state and either allow the request to go through or deny it and redirect them to a login page and so forth. So this is the key to the vulnerability. If you're using Next.js middleware for authentication or authorization purposes or any type of permission checking, you are susceptible and at risk to this vulnerability. All right, so let's take a look at the disclosure that was put out up on the Next.js GitHub account under their security tab. It calls it out as authorization bypass in Next.js middleware. In particular, the impact is it's possible to bypass authorization checks within a Next.js application if the authorization check occurs in middleware, as we just outlined. In addition to that, we could see it is a critical severity vulnerability with a 9.1 out of 10 score. The way that score is determined is based on these metrics, as you can see here, and that is very high. Taking a quick look over at the sneak vulnerability database for Next.js, we can see that it actually gives it a 9.3 score using the CVSS base scores version 4.0 using similar criteria here. So that's the score of it. So at this point, if you are using Next.js and you're using Next.js middleware for authentication authorization purposes, you need to know what versions are impacted. And if you're using those versions, that means you are impacted. So anything over 11.1.4, but less than 12.35, similar, anything over version 13, over 14, but less than these higher end numbers here, right? These ranges and all the way up to version 15. 
okay? It is fixed. If you want to just quickly end the video here and fix your problem, if you found yourself impacted by this, you need to upgrade to the corresponding version in your major version. So for version 12, it's got to be 1235, 1359, and so forth, as you can see here, okay? Right there highlighted. Last but not least, we should point out and give credit to the researchers that discovered and reported this to the Next.js team. And that is, I believe it's Rashid Alam and Yasser Alam that were the two individuals that found it and disclosed it. They also did a great write up on their findings. Rashid did over here on this website. I'll have a link in the description below so you can check it out that they go into more detail on how they came about finding the vulnerability. So go check out their website and learn more about that too. So one other quick note to determine if you're impacted by this is if you are self-hosting or you're controlling the hosting of your Next.js and the version that you're using for Next.js, if you are using one of the hosting providers like Vercel or Netlify, they have already upgraded to the patch version that fixes this vulnerability. So you're not susceptible to it. All right. So without further ado, let's see this in action. Let's try and exploit a vulnerable version of a Next.js application. And to do that, I'm going to use my colleague and buddy Laurent Tall's example that he has here up on GitHub. Link for this will be in the description below as well. I'm going to get this running and I'm going to show you it in action. Okay, I have the code here loaded up and ready to go. You can see we're using Next.js version 14.2.24, which is just below the patch version for this vulnerability. And Laron has implemented some Next.js middleware functionality for us in which it's doing an authorization check here, okay? So in order for us to access the API, we need to be authenticated as a user by having an authorization header. And then the value must be my JWT token here, like you can see here. If that is not the case, we will get an error of unauthorized with the status of 401. And we won't be able to continue on to the request chain here, okay? So that said, let's get this app running, npm run dev. All right, in order to access and test this API out, I'm gonna use a REST client via an extension in Visual Studio Code that lets me send requests. So we need to hit the hello API. I'm gonna use it without the authorization. We're gonna pull that out for a second and try to send that request and see what response we get from the API. We do indeed get that 401 unauthorized and the error message is unauthorized. But if we do, let's say we logged in, we were issued a token and then that can be included in any subsequent request to the API under the hello API with this authorization header. We send that request now and we see we get a 200 okay message hello world. So it is working in that case. So what if we were able to bypass this using that middleware vulnerability? Let's try it out. Now, in order to make that happen, if we go back and look at the source code for Next.js, let's take a look in just a second here. Here we'll notice that if sub requests, which is gonna be based on this custom header, HTTP header, X middleware sub requests, if the value of that includes middleware info dot name. Now, how did they discover what the value should be of this middleware info dot name? Again, I encourage you to go check out Rashid's blog post about this, where he shares that research for you to understand further. But just know that this is where this is coming from. So we need to include an X middleware sub request header with a value for the middleware info dot name. So knowing that and how to bypass this authorization check, we include the X middleware sub request header. And the value of that is going to be middleware colon middleware colon middle five times one two three four five now one thing to note with that example i just used is i'm using version 14 of next.js and i used a payload of middleware 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 five times and that is specific to the more recent versions of next.js because of how the logic is implemented in that one you can read more about how to exploit this vulnerability based on the logic implemented in previous versions or other versions of next.js in rashid's blog post here and that, funnily enough, will get us to access this. So again, I'm gonna make the request without the header. We'll get a 401, and then we'll be able to bypass any constraints with this new header here. We get 200 okay. And we have successfully bypassed any authorization checks or authentication checks in Next.js middleware for this API because of the vulnerability. All right, so if you wanna be able to find out about vulnerabilities like this without having to wait for a YouTube video to tell you about it, you can use Sneak. You can sign up for a free account with Sneak at sneak.io, that's S-N-Y-K.io, link in the description below. But if you're not convinced yet, let me show you how Sneak would help you in this case. Using the example project from earlier, I have the Sneak VS Code extension set up and ready to go, and I scan the project, and when it's done, it came back and found that my open source security had a vulnerability in it 
in which case the package JSON has a vulnerability via Next.js. I click on that to find out more information. As you can see, this new tab got opened here. We can see the vulnerable module is Next.js because of the version 14.2.24. I can fix it in any of these versions. So in this case, we'd want to go to 14.2.25. And we could see more information about the vulnerability that was written up via Sneak. And that's how you can quickly and easily be alerted to vulnerabilities like this and find ways to fix them. Well, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding, everyone.